This is a fuelless generator. It's a solar generator. And uh, I literally got this a couple days ago, and as we speak, a hurricane is bearing down on us. And what's great about a fuelless generator is I can operate this in a small room and not worry about fumes killing me. Okay, so if you live in an apartment, or you want to run a generator in your house, or if you live in a development and you want to run a generator, but you don't want the whole neighborhood to hear you and know you have a generator, this is the way to go. It's a 2000 life cycle generator and it's got a 50 amp life cycle. This is the power key for the main power. Simply turn it on like that. This generator is divided into three portions. You have your input, you have your storage, and you have your output. And what's great about the storage is it can take a charge. You can charge it with your AC input. It'll take a charge and hold a charge for a year with only a 3% loss after a year. That's a really good charge. Like I said, it's a 2000 life cycle battery. So that means you can, you can charge it, use it, charge it, use it 2000 times. All right. Now, as far as the input, like I said, there's an AC input, which means while the power grids up, you charge this thing and you got a good charge for a year. Okay, so whenever you have power, you can charge this. But also, when you don't have the power grid, you have a DC input, and this is where you would plug your solar panel into. Okay, and it does come with a solar panel. I have behind it there. I'll pull it out and show you. But also, if you already have a solar panel or you want to pick up a different solar panel, you can hook a solar panel here or some other DC input here. Okay, so you take this off and put your wires here. Your uh, solar panels would have the red wire and a black wire. You simply thread them on there and you're good to go. Put it out in the sun and you can charge. I believe it takes about 10 hours to charge this fully. Now with uh, the AC input, of course, it's going to take less. And of course, if you have a, a 50 amp charger, it's going to take about three hours to charge this thing. Now, as far as the output, it has three different setups here. You have your on off switch here and that turns on your 120 volt outputs. You have two of them. All right. Now it has a max of a thousand watts. So that means you're not going to run a hair dryer or an air conditioner on this. But there, there are appliances that you can run on this. In fact, I bought a microwave that is a 600 watt microwave, which I could run on this. And you could, you could run, a, you could put a power strip into this and uh, run quite a few small appliances on it. For example, I'll put a light in it right now to show you. Oh, I've got to get it the right way. There we are. It does have a little bit of a hum to it. And you can see I'm running this light. I'll turn on another light. That's on the same. So there's more watts I'm using. But I could also plug in a drill here and start, you know, drilling and doing other things. You can hook quite a few small appliances into this. But you cannot exceed the 1,000 watt max. That's the key. you got to remember that. It does have a 2,000 watt peak. In other words, if something takes over 1,000 watts to kick in, it'll be okay as long as it doesn't go over the 2,000 watts. But then it'll have to be under 1,000 watts to run. So in other words, my wife's hair, air, uh, hair dryer is a 1,600-watt hair dryer, so you can't, you can't use that on this. So, sorry, hon. But also, you have the USB outputs, all right? For cell phones, you have two different ones, so you can charge your cell phones. For uh, tablets and pads, things like that, you have your 2.1-amp, so you can charge them, and that also comes with a switch. And also you have your DC outlets. So like you're in your car, your DC plugs, this is what you'd be using that for. And of course you have your DC output cords there. Now, yeah, what else? Well, it does come with some accessories, and there are things you can buy for this. It does come with the cord, so you can plug this in and charge it comes with a shoulder strap so you can carry it on your shoulder. It does come with a little emergency light. So let's say the power is out and I got my flashlight and I come find my generator and I turn it on in the dark and I plug this in and now I have light and I can see my generator and I can see better to see what I'm doing here. So that's kind of the idea of that. It does also come with your adapter so whatever kind of head or cell phone or whatever you have can be hooked in like so 
to charge. It does come with a 20 foot cord for your solar panel and I'll show you that in a minute. The 20 foot cord is the best length for the solar panel to generator. If you go longer than that you're going to start losing power capacity. It does come with a little emergency hand crank to charge this generator. Now you'd have to crank this for 20 minutes in order to get a two hour charge. But it's just another option. The hand crank attaches to the generator using a small cord with clips. You've seen these before. Simply red to red on your DC input. Okay, and then you just slowly hand crank. Like I said, 20 minutes will give you two hours charge. And it's not a big effort. Of course, after 10, 20 minutes, it might feel like an effort. But you just slowly crank, and it's going to give you that emergency charge should you have no power grid and no solar available at the time. Let me show you that solar panel. I keep the solar panel in the box, but it is very rigid construction. These are the same panels that are used in residential roofing. It would be up on the roof of your house. It's going to take a lot of abuse very sturdy and it's two-sided because it's like a folding table it literally unfolds easy storage easy carry easy to use you see your DC coupling on the back here fold it out you set it up in the Sun plug it in and, and charge your generator now like I said you can use other solar panels simply wire it up here on your DC input very convenient. It's quiet. It's light enough to carry around. You can put it in your car, travel with it. No bad fumes, no sound. Okay, so there are some downsides to this generator. The one main one, I would say that if you're using a lot of power and you suck the 50 amp hours charge out of it quickly, you might find yourself without power if the grid doesn't come back up soon. But you have to weigh those options. Do you want to deal with that fuel generator? For me, I know I'm not going to be using so much power at once that I'm going to drain it out quickly. And I know that if there is no sun and I use up all the energy, I'm not going to mind hand cranking that thing. It's not a big deal to me. But there are also other options. Get a second unit so that while one is in use, the other one can be being charged. The other option is have a backup fuel generator. But again, you have to deal with the situation that you're in and think about this. Just think about the fuel, the noise, the fumes, your gasoline, your diesel generator is going to be a bigger unit and it's going to be more expensive. Okay. Now if you need something bigger they are coming out with bigger ones from what I understand. But I uh, just thought I'd put this out there. Like I said uh, there are some appliances that you can get especially with this uh, we have on back order we have a blanket a heating blanket so if you're uh, not getting enough heat in your home you're, you know you're heating with a wood burner or space heaters uh, for sleeping at night you got your heating blanket we have a, a microwave that I ha have over on the shelf I'll show it to you in, in another video 600 watts so I can run it right on this like I said high amp high watt appliances you're not going to use on this but you can run many appliances of lower wattage on this at the same time. So there you have it. Uh, be wise, be smart, and practical when it comes to prepping. This was a practical purchase for us. Like I said, the hurricane is bearing down on us as we speak. Who knows, uh, last year there were people without power for two weeks at a time or more. Our power was down for one day. Now I've, I've got a refrigerator and freezer loaded with food. The freezer is loaded with meat actually and I don't want to lose it this year. Last year we didn't have a problem because one day your, your freezer will hold up for one day with no power but any longer than that and uh, you're going to lose whatever is in your freezer. So This was worth it for me this year. I want some conveniences. I want to be able to charge my cell phone. I want to be able to turn on the TV, the computer if I need to and this will do it. I can run the TV, the computer, a couple lights charge my cell phone all at the same time with this okay and if you have a sunny day after the storm be it a snowstorm or whatever whatever the emergency is sunny day hook the solar panel up 
while it is still charged. All right? And you're not pulling as much energy out of it. So you're actually pulling energy out of the sun instead of pulling all your energy out of your battery. Anyway, oh, one more thing. It does come with an instructional video. It's very simple to use. I, I pretty much gave it to you. I mean, there are some other tips. There's a question and answer session on this video, which is very good, very enlightening. Good questions are answered. If you can, get one. Uh, any questions, uh, PM me or leave a comment, and I'll try to get back to you. Alrighty, thanks a lot.